Good morning and welcome. Thanks for joining me and uh, it's Wednesday so that of course that means another watercolor demo. This morning we are kind of easing our way into winter and uh, I wanted to do these cards. I love doing these cards because they're they're fast and they're quite easy to do and I'm going to share with you some of the tricks that I use for that. Um, let me see here. Uh, we've got North Wales, we've got France, Belfonte, Pennsylvania, um, Belgium, Columbus, Austria, Peterborough, uh, California. Gosh, you guys are from all over. Thank you so much for joining. So uh, when I'm using, when I'm painting these cards, I will, uh, I will be using one of the, uh, sorry, I just got to switch this over here. I'm going to be using um, mostly Arches watercolor paper, but um, but you could also use uh, pre-made cards. These ones are Strathmore, and um, they're not my favorite, but um, the thing is with these, they are kind of intended for watercolor, <laughs> of course, but probably not as wet as we're going to work with this. So they come like this. They have a little fold in them and so you can fold them like this. So I'm going to show you first how I would use these watercolor cards. Uh, so you fold them. I fold them to paint them and I will attach them to something sturdy. <clears throat> so this is, I'm just going to use regular ordinary tape here. And what I want to do, because it's a little hard to paint it just loose like this, and if I get it wet, I'm going to need to keep it sort of flat. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm putting this tape sort of half on and half off. Okay, so I know the fold is at the top. Once it's folded and taped down like this, it's really easy to lose track of where the fold is. So I'm going to mark this. Now you can write on it or maybe just put an extra piece of tape right here just so you remember where the fold is. And so I'm going to do the same thing on all sides. I will tape sort of half on and half off. And what that's going to do for me is it's going to give me a nice little border. And this will work whether you're doing these cards or any other kind of cards. The, the thing with some of these cards, though, is that if you don't know how to take the tape off, you can end up sort of peeling back the layers of the watercolor paper. So there's a right way and a wrong way to pull the tape off. So I'm going to... Uh, let's assume I've already painted this, and what I want to do is remove the tape. So whenever you are removing tape from your paper, from your cards, always pull in the direction away from the, the uh, paper. If I peel inward, or uh, if I just sort of give it a good yank and rip it off like a band-aid, uh, you could really pull away the layers. So Make sure, first of all, that it's 100% dry and then uh, pull it off away and not straight up. I'm pulling it kind of like this, right? So I'm kind of pulling it away from the piece. Imagine if you have taped a, the edge of a book, all right? So you've taped the, the page's edge of a book and you pull the tape like in the direction that you would open the book. Well, of course, it's going to pull off the first, first uh, page, right? So your paper's kind of the same way. Pull it in the, pull it away from the book, and then you won't tear out that first page or that first layer of your watercolor paper. A, a suggestion for future: how to lay down an interesting blended background for a flower, and then pull, then decide where to pull out negative painted leaves. Ah, okay, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is I could paint on this now. I, I've marked where my fold is, always important. <laughs> All you have to do is paint one of these the wrong way 
and you'll learn your lesson. But um, if you do happen to paint it and the fold is on the bottom or some darn thing, then what you can do is you can simply cut the card out and put it on another card. So that's kind of how I'm going to do my cards, but I'm not going to work on this paper because it's not my favorite. Um, if I'm going to go really wet with my watercolor, I prefer to use my good old arches. So, or arch, depending on where you're from, it's pronounced differently. But, uh, so what I've done is I've taken a quarter sheet here and then I've quartered it again, and that's what I'm going to use. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take that same tape and I'm going to tape off a border. Uh, Let's do it this way. I'll stick around to the end because I'm going to show you a twist on this uh, this little technique that I'm doing today. And you will, I think you'll like it. So I'm putting a piece of tape there. I'm putting a piece of tape across here. This is just clear tape, and the reason I'm using clear tape is because I can see through it so that I can center it on my lines. And I find the clear tape it just gives me a nice nice border. All right, so I've, I've quartered my sheet like this, and I've got a nice little area here to work my card. So I will end up painting it here, cut it out, then I can use something like cardstock or even bristol board if I want to. And I would fold it, and I would attach the uh, painted card to the the painting to the card so you can attach it any number of ways that you want you can you can either use those little bump ups that they use for scrapbooking or you could um, you know just use a, a one of those glue sticks or uh, painting hinges or um, or paint you know those little corners that they use for scrapbooking as well, you know, you can put it kind of into a frame. And then the person that you give it to, if they want to frame it, they could. So uh, let me just see if I'm missing any any comments. Nope, looks like we're good, thank you. And uh, in case you didn't know, today is watercolor, World Watercolor Day. So if I take my watercolor paper and I want to make the entire card out of watercolor paper, here's what I would do. Because, you know, watercolor paper doesn't always fold that nicely, right? So you would have a piece of watercolor paper like this, and I would take something, not not something that would cut, but something with a reasonable point here, like you could use like, you know, even a butter knife or something like that. And I will take a ruler, and you can score, I'll just score it this way as if I'm making a card out of it and I'm not going to measure it or anything but you, I would put the fold in and then I would trim the card because the chances of you getting the fold exactly right without it you know being a little bit wonky are probably remote <laughs> but anyway I'm going to just press into the watercolor paper like this and I'm actually making a little score. Now let me zoom in so you can see this. All right, so maybe you can see the little score that I made in the card there, or in the paper. And then it will fold really nicely. And there, there's what I mean about <laughs> it not always lining up perfectly. So cut, put the fold in first and then cut the card. You'll probably get a, a much straighter card. And. Uh, Think about the envelope sizes that you have too. So if you're buying some ready-made envelopes and you want to make the cards to fit, you have to measure accordingly, right? So let's get into the painting process here. So I will just clear away a few things here and I'll show you some examples of what I want to paint today. And like these are just so serene and peaceful. I think that they're quite lovely. Now this one actually has, you can see it has some sparkle on it. Uh, this was one of the ones made on um, Strathmore card. And you can see it's a little wonky, which I could flatten. I could take the time to flatten that if I wanted to, if I dampened the back, put some paper towel and then some books on it and stuff like that. I could flatten that out. But 
you know that's kind of an extra step and um, I just I just like working on arches so this one too it's it's not too bad it's but it's a little bit wonky as you can see so these cards are terrific you know if you're doing a flower or something but not always so great if you're going to get them as wet as I'm going to get it so because they're not the paper's not 100% cotton and it's not um, uh, as absorbent right so it tends to warp the card plus it's not re pre-stretched the way I do so here's another version here and uh, lots of fun so that's kind of where we're going with this I don't have a reference picture to share with you I'm just kind of inventing some of these I know I work very realistically most of the time but sometimes I just like to play so today is a play day so I will come in and I have my area that I want to paint in. Let's move this down a little bit. There we go. So we have uh, we have this now. This is my absolute favorite thing. I could like circles are hard, right? So I, I could use one of these, and I could um, you know I could pick a pick a circle, and I could trace it on there, and I could mask it off, and all of that. But for cards, an easier solution is stickers. <laughs> so I'm just going to use a sticker. It's about the right size, so why not, right? But the important thing is here, look for this word, removable. <laughs> Very important that it's removable. So uh, make, make sure you're looking for the removable type because they have permanent and they have removable. So make sure you're using the the right one all right that one's open so i'll use this one and all i have to do is peel and stick let's see put let's put it right there okay so we'll put we put our our little sticker there if i used a colored one it would be easier for you to see but my my little sticker is here so now i want to take some paint and uh get my sky in but before I do I will paint or I will draw in my landscape so I could make it you know something like this right there's my landscape pretty pretty easy pretty straightforward and I will just use a big brush here I'm just using a this is a squirrel hair brush but you could use a flat brush pretty much anything will do and I can use any combination of blues and grays for this. So for this, I'm probably going to use, I have an Indanthrone blue, beautiful blue. Uh, that one's by Core. And I'll be using a Da Vinci brand uh, Payne's Gray. Uh, I might even use a little bit of cobalt. So the idea here is not to make it all one color because that's a little bit too flat and boring. So. Uh, let's see not missing any questions or comments lots of people joining thank you so much really appreciate that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet only the sky so I will just wet this so this is the part that's kind of hard on those um, other cards those ready-made cards uh, if you do buy cards, make sure they at least say watercolor because I've seen a lot of people buy another brand called, or it's not another brand, but it's another style called Creative Cards or other types of cards. Make sure it says watercolor because it's pretty hard to uh, paint on something that's not intended for watercolor. So I'm just getting that wet. Now I'm going to come in and start using maybe some Indanthrone Blue. And I'll just tell you what my colors are here. I don't have my um, camera set up for my palette. I could zoom out a little bit, I suppose. There we go. And since I'm mostly using blues, I'll just bring this blue over here. So in Danthrone blue and... Um, I don't want it too bright. It is night, so I will use a little bit of... That wasn't in Danthrone. That was Ultramarine. I went into the wrong color because I twisted my palette. So a little bit of Payne's Gray in Danthrone Blue. 
it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could do you could do these in various colors if you wanted to. I mean, there's who's to say it couldn't be a uh, red <laughs> red knight. It could be a red knight. So I will take some um, in Danthrone and some Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to sweep in a couple of clouds here. So I can put them straight across or I can put them on an angle, uh, but the sky will not be white, like I'm not working on a white sky or anything like that. It's going to be fairly dark. So coming in, a little more color here. And as you go to the horizon, make sure you get them a lot smaller because that creates the look of distance, right? So lots of lots of big ones at the top, small ones at the bottom. And I can go right through that sticker, right, like that, if I want to. Um, but I kind of like, actually, you know what, I kind of like the idea of the moon glowing. So if I, do, if I go through, what I could do is just lift, if I blot my brush, I could lift out a little bit around the moon. There we go. So the moon's got a little bit of glow. And just blend that in a little bit. All right, so I, I like my sky. I think I can do pretty well with that. And I'm going to start thinking about my snow. Now, keep in mind this is night. <laughs> it's night, so the snow's not going to be pure white. It's going to need a little bit of color. So for the snow, I'm going to keep it a little less gray and a little bit more blue. So I'm going to go with this in Danthrone. Uh, maybe a little bit of cobalt. Yeah, cobalt's a little bit cleaner. I love the in Danthrone. It's a little bit... Um, denim-like, shall we say. And just so that my sky doesn't um, run together with my land, I will just dry this quickly. Now, if you're doing actual cards for the holidays, then I would, you know, I would just do all the skies. And by the time you get back to the first one, you would have the, it would be dry enough for you to add in your snow. So, I'm just drying that, just take a second to do that. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of color. Now this is going to be really watered down, because I don't want it dark, I just don't want it white. All right, really pale. You can see I've really watered that down. And there's that Arches logo again coming back to haunt me. <laughs> I love the paper, I just don't like the logo. Um, or I don't like the the watermark, shall we say. The logo's fine, but the watermark bothers me. So anyway, I'm going to grab a smaller brush here. Uh, how about uh, how about a six? I'm going to get a six, which is just a little brush, you know, just a little bit smaller than my pinky. And I'll take a little bit more color, a little bit more in Danthrone, perhaps. And I want to start to put in some shadows in the snow. So the, the hills roll, right? So we want to make a little bit of a shadow. So I put in a little bit of color, and then I soften the edge. So there'll be some of that at the bottom as well. Let's just come in and maybe this brush is too small, I don't know. But just want to make this a, a gentle, uh, gentle gradation here. Just wet this clean water here and then let that come down into some dark down at the bottom and the 
tape is going to give us these really nice clean borders. All right, so I'm going to give this a dry. Once again. And then I want to start to add in the stars. Now it's very important to remember to add the stars in before adding the trees in because otherwise you can have stars on your trees. <laughs> my brushes and my palette. Yeah, I'm using squirrel hair brushes. Uh, I also have a list of all the materials that I typically use right here on my website. So if you haven't checked that out, it's something that I just added um, not too long ago. So you, should, you, should, you would be able to go and check that out on my website. You know, I have I have the names of the brushes and the sizes and lists of uh, like links to where you can get them and things like that. the The palette that I'm using it's called a color wheel palette and it's by Speedball, but I'm having a really tough time. A lot of people are having a tough time finding it, so you might just have to find something similar. I know Stephen Quiller has one very similar looking, so um, try that out. So I'm just letting this get down to room temperature. And the next thing I'm going to pull out here is my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Now this Bleed Proof White could be, you could be using gouache, you could be using white watercolor, whatever, whatever you have. Uh, so I'm going to, that, that jar is not open. This one's open, but it uh, lost its label. So I'm just going to take this off and now I don't want to spatter snow on my on my snow that sounds so funny or I don't don't want to spatter uh, stars on my snow so I'm just going to put a couple of paper towels here just so I don't get stars on my snow I will take my trusty little my little fan brush my favorite way of spattering is with a fan brush I prefer it to a toothbrush which tends to kind of fling the paint and and sometimes you get a streak and it kind of gets all over the place so I like to use a little fan brush so get some on here then I just use something else to tap it with so I'll just use this palette knife and I can put in my stars it's interesting that um, that you're going to see stars through all of this, but uh, gonna get, oh, there we go, a little bit more. That's good. My paint is a little bit thicker, so I'm having a hard time getting much off of it. I'm getting small spatters, and it's working quite well, but they're teeny tiny. If I want some bigger stars, I have to get my paint a little bit more watery not watery definitely not watery but I'll add a little dampen my brush maybe that's the best thing to say all right I got loads and loads and loads of stars there so they're all small which is fine okay so I'm going to be using this again but for now I'm going to put the lid on it and I want to put in a couple of trees. So I'm going to take that small brush again. I will be using basically Payne's Gray for this. So I will take some Payne's Gray. Fairly dense, so I want to have lots of pigment, not too watery. And just anywhere I want to, I can start putting some trees. Now, if you wanted to do like a little church or a farm or a, a people walking down a hill on a toboggan or like pulling a toboggan or something like that, that's fine. Uh, you know, get as creative as you want with this. That's half the fun, right? Is not having a reference picture. So I'm going to do some trees here in the distance. That's what I'll do first. And I'm going to just... put a little bit over here on the, on the distant 
horizon. So I just put in a line and then dash, dash, dash across. And that's basically my very simple, simple uh, tree. Make sure that they're different heights and that they're not all spaced evenly. It's very hard to do because we are so hardwired for, for making things even that it's hard to overlap them or space them so that it's not in a pattern. <laughs> we just, we tend to do that. Everybody does it. Now you can go straight across and, and do all kinds of trees here, or you could also um, just leave, uh, you know, some gaps and put some trees in between and things like that. That would all work. Now this isn't really, really dark yet. I'm going to go a little darker in what's in the foreground because when you get things that are coming close to you they tend to get a little bit more um, more contrast more detail all that kind of stuff yes and happy thanksgiving to all all my american friends here in canada we have already had our thanksgiving ours is in october early october and I guess it's, I think that's because we don't do the whole pilgrim part of it, <laughs> you know, but we, we celebrate the harvest, I guess, which of course being in a colder climate, we have an earlier harvest. So we have an earlier Thanksgiving. So I'm sure you're all getting your turkeys ready and all that kind of stuff. Hope you have a great day of eating and football. <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, the question here is, um, do, you, do I ever have issues with the heavy water load breaking down the stickers? No, I have not had that problem. However, and this is important, it does need to be 100% dry before you pull it off. So that's, that's the thing there is you just need to make sure that the sticker is dry. But they're pretty darn sturdy. I'm actually uh, pretty surprised that it works as well as it does. Okay, so maybe I'll just do a couple more here. Doing more talking than I am painting here. So coming across like that. So I've got some trees on the distant hill and I will bring some in the foreground hill. So I'll make these ones a little bit darker and of course a little bigger because they're closer. So as I uh, do these trees, I can actually bring some down onto the hill too. It doesn't all have to be along that line at the top. Uh, can look really nice if it's that way, it might maybe just slightly over the hill kind of thing, but uh, you could put in a fence, you could put in grasses, you know, let your imagination run. So I will come in and put some larger trees here. So put this one just beyond the hill here. So I'm kind of running it along the, uh, you know, keeping the line of the, the hillside here. Now this, this one being closer will be bigger. So let's go a little bigger than the other trees. We'll put a pair of them. There we go, and I will do some larger ones. So I'm going to do a bigger one maybe here. Normally I don't recommend putting a line down and then painting the tree, but if you're quick about it, you can do a pretty successful tree. And because we're working so dark here, that line pretty much gets covered up. But if you paint trees and you always paint the, the trunk first, uh, you could run into trouble with the tree trunk showing through the horizontal lines. So you may want to uh, think about that as you're painting. You've got to work quickly in order for that not to really end up showing. Now depending on what kind of tree it is, you may or may not see the, the bottom of the tree, the part under the, under the tree. I think I'll take mine right to the bottom. Usually if there's snow, you wouldn't see much of the bottom anyway. 
So there we go. And that's kind of in the middle, so I think I need to um, maybe put a few more over beside this because that one is right smack in the middle. So let's make a more dominant one maybe here. Right, make an even larger one. Doing really big trees on this this one. That's the fun. You get to do what you want. So each one of these is just a stroke with the brush, kind of a little, kind of a smile, so that they're not poker straight. And I'm just overlapping all my strokes and getting some really natural looking. If you have a couple of gaps in between, don't worry about it, that's fine. We're going to put some snow on these trees after anyway. And there's a lot of snow on the ground, so there'd probably be some on the trees, unless there was a big windstorm blow it off. But most of the time you're going to see a little bit of snow on the trees. And it doesn't all have to be coniferous trees. You could put in some deciduous trees. A Santa and Slade and in the light of the moon. Oh my gosh. Yes, Margo, it would be. But holy smokes, that would be so tiny. Uh, if, you, if you were painting a little Santa and sleigh here, I suppose you could do it. That would be cute. But very tedious. I'm trying to stick with the quick and easy theme here. Uh, let me do a couple, couple of smaller trees back here. Uh, why don't we do, why don't we do something down here? maybe maybe a couple of grasses so we'll just do a couple of grasses that's good that's enough to show you what i need to do so the next thing i'll do is I will put on a little bit of snow on these trees. So one thing to keep in mind are it's nighttime, so the snow is not completely white. Don't put white, white snow on these trees because it will look really out of place. It'll look very strange because if the moon is here and this is our light source, and then we put bright white snow on our trees, it's going to be weird because we're actually looking at the shadow side of the tree. So I don't put my white paint over here on my palette. I don't want to touch anything on my palette with this. This is opaque like crazy and putting white into this will be like putting milk in tea. You can't get it out. So I'm going to take my brush and take a little bit of this and I'm going to put it, I usually use the lid for mixing, but you know, you can take another little cup or something to mix this in. So I've got a little bit of white right here. Rinse that out of my brush and I'm going to pick up a bit of blue. So maybe some of this in Danthrone and I will mix a little of that in there. I think a little more is needed. I was a bit shy about putting too much in so <laughs> took it a little bit too literal when I said not too much. So now I have kind of a blue gray and that's what I'm going to put on my trees rather than pure white. So these ones are still drying so I'll start way back here and I will just put some little little dashes on my trees that I've done and get some get the look of some snow on these trees. And obviously they don't need to have a pattern or anything like that. That would be kind of weird. So just little dots and dashes. Horizontal dots and dashes is, is good for creating the snow. So I'll come in and of course, they have to be bigger dots and dashes when you get to the bigger trees. 
That would only make sense, right? up a little more probably need a bit more a bit more paint here put some little, little tiny dots in there too because there will be tiny branches every once in a while So just little horizontal dots and dashes. Pretty straightforward, but it looks pretty good, I think. You know, it, it ends up looking quite nice. Picking up a little bit of that Payne's Gray, it seems, but that's okay. They will look quite natural if they have a little bit of color in here, or a little bit of the Payne's Gray. All right, so all of my trees now have snow. And maybe a little more on this one. There we go. So I'm done with this. I will put this lid back on, rinse out my brush, and I'm going to take off my sticker. I want to make sure it's fully dry, so I'm just going to give it a really quick dry just to make sure. But we aren't finished with this yet because <clears throat> we need to do, we need to think about this light. Now I'm just going to take, sometimes I just take a little one of these uh, retractable knives and get underneath the sticker and pull it off and there's my moon. So easiest moon ever, easiest, easiest circle ever. Um, you can use smaller stickers too. You know, if you wanted to use some little ones like this and make the moon look a little bit further away, that works equally well. So if that's our light source and we're looking at it, we're, we need to put some shadows in for these trees. So I'm going to take the snow color here that I did before, which was a bit of indanthrone and mostly indanthrone, I think. And I feel a sneeze coming. <laughs> it's gonna, I'm gonna sneeze, I think. But I'm gonna take this color. Let me show you that it's a little bit, little bit runny. I need more space on my table here. Yeah, bring that over. So this is um, the indanthrone. But the very important thing to remember here is that if the light is coming from the moon, the shadows have to line up from the moon. So this one, this one's pretty straightforward. This one's pretty much straight down. But these ones, they're on an angle, so this shadow is going to be angled. This one even more, right? So. And that's the one thing so many people will forget is that the the shadows have to go um, or they're created by the light and you have to have the shadows going on those angles for them to look proper I'm going a little bit a little bit light on my shadows I could go a little bit darker but I will I'm not displeased with what I've got right I might come in and now these grasses are also going to need some shadow so I will have to run these shadows in the same way I 
right? So they need to come from the moon. Okay, pretty easy, huh? So that one, that one's done already. So my take on this, boy, we're only like 40 minutes in here, but my take on this is that I love this idea. Get as creative as you want. You can uh, add a house, a barn, a person, a dog, a deer, anything you want. Like, just let your imagination run wild. And just remember all of the all of the sun, everything's going to get a shadow no matter what you put on there, but it's all going to come from the moon. I said the sun, but I meant the moon. So I'm going to go over these once more. I just think that they're a little bit light, so I'm going to go over these again. Probably better if I don't, but I just want them a little darker. It's hard to stay in the exact same lines, that's the problem. And with shadows, they will be sort of like one you know, one value. They won't be um, changing very much. Like you won't see lines in a shadow, in other words. It might have a gradation, might go lighter as it goes further away, but it it usually will not have lines in it. So I've just got to be careful to hit the same lines that I did before. There, that's a little bit more, a little bit more dramatic, right? Okay, so that, that way you really get the sense of the moonlight. If you wanted to take some cloud and put it over the moon, you definitely could. Now that the sticker's off, you know, I could put a little bit of wispy cloud stuff going right through the moon, right? I could do that. Let's soften that a little bit. Okay, so we've got a little bit of cloud going through the moon, and uh, <laughs> famous last words, yes, pretty easy, huh? Uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty high success rate on this one. It's, it's a lot of fun. All right, so for all of you who have stayed to the end, I, I sometimes will do a twist on this, and I love this. Take a silhouette of a, a woodland animal. So for example, this bear, right? I've got this bear where I've got the moon. I've painted the scene inside of this silhouette or this one. I made this one more blue, uh, but so much fun. You can take animals, but make sure when when you're choosing an animal silhouette to do that you take get one that's not like spindly, skinny, uh, that you actually have enough space to paint. Now the tricky part of this one, of course, is you have to paint inside the lines. Uh, you don't you don't have a nice taped off border. Uh, but in terms of a card, this looks great. You know, you just you can leave the border white behind, or you can spatter on it, or whatever you want to do. One final note is that if I wanted to dress this up a little bit, I could actually put smoke uh, sparkle into this. So if I were making this into a card. I could just take, uh, uh, not my good watercolor brush, but another brush, and use this iridescent medium. And if you're going to add sparkle to your snow, I would recommend that you only add it where the moon is hitting the snow. You're not going to get sparkle in the shadows. Don't put it in your shadows. You have to be selective about it. The one that I did here, I will zoom in a bit. Right, so keep it, keep it in the light blue areas only. Don't, don't go through the trees. Don't go. Uh, well, I shouldn't say don't. I, I mean, it would look funny if you did. You can put it a little bit on the snow that's on the trees. So I guess that would be acceptable. This is the one with, with sparkle on it. Okay, so you can see that it's got a little bit of shine. And I didn't put it everywhere. I put it, you know, mostly where the highlights are. None in the shadows, but I put it where the, the highlights are. And uh, this one I actually didn't do with gum arabic. Or I, I didn't do with the iridescent medium, I should say. I would put, on this one I put gum arabic, and I just sprinkled glitter on it. Like, I, I it's really fine. It's called, um, 
Matt crystal like crystal something but the really really fine stuff anyway so that's our moon we can you know this one I have bigger stars look at I've got much <laughs> much finer stars in this uh, this one's a little lighter you know depends on how much drama you want to create uh, you can make it you can make it as dramatic as you want. So you can make the sky a lot darker, but make sure you get the sky the way you want it before you start putting your trees on because you can't really go back to darken it, especially now. Uh, there's not much I could do in terms of that, but I I like it anyway. It's still quite light and try uh, try using even different colors. You know, why would, why would this not work in if it were in burgundy <laughs> or something like that right give it a go see what happens experiment uh, when it's something small like this it's not precious you can have fun and uh, so I could get into another whole uh, sort of area of this but uh, that I think we'll wrap this one up for today put in fences whatever you want and have fun with this one so happy Thanksgiving to all of you and uh, I haven't missed any questions uh, let me just read back here just make sure I haven't skipped anything I hate when I when I sign off and then all of a sudden I see a question pop up <laughs> uh, yes so looks like I have everything I don't think I have any questions that I haven't answered if I wanted a warm color what would I use um well there's some great colors like uh there's one called perylene maroon i love it's a gorgeous color it's a kind of a reddish rusty kind of color it's beautiful i think it's better if you don't use granulating colors too much but uh you know that's why i've kind of stayed away from the the ultramarine blues for this because i i find the in Danthrone, not only a really nice blue, but it it is smoother. So I like that better. All right. Looks like I've wrapped it up. And uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody in the U.S. And have a great week. See you next time. Bye.